so vitally dependent on love that love and intimacy are powerful by the very existence of love and the fact that we need it. Back in the 13th century, the German king, Frederick II, conducted a diabolical experiment intended to discover what language children would speak if never spoken to. He had a hunch it would be German. Some things are just obvious, right? So the king took babies from their mothers at birth and placed them in the care of nurses who were forbidden to speak in their hearing. But there was a second rule that was imposed as well. The nurses were forbidden to even touch the infants. To his great dismay, Frederick's experiment was cut short, not before, however, something tragically significant was revealed regarding human nature. As you may have guessed already, the babies grew up to speak no language at all because they died. In the year 1248, an Italian historian named Salimbini recorded with an air of scientific observation, they could not live without petting. Astounding. The babies literally died for want of touch. Modern medicine calls this phenomenon failure to thrive. For some reason, we humans flourish under the influence of love and we gradually die without it. And the implications of this truth are huge. Consider, for example, the research of Dr. Dean Ornish. In his national best-selling book, Love and Survival, Ornish presents study after study demonstrating that love is a chief influence for mental, emotional, and even physical health. On page 29 of his book, he summarizes the unexpected messages of the rapidly accumulating body of data. He says, and I quote, anything that promotes feelings of love and intimacy is healing. Anything that promotes isolation, separation, loneliness, loss, hostility, anger, cynicism, depression, alienation, and related feelings often leads to suffering, disease, and premature death from all causes. Modern science is now proving through controlled studies that human beings are literally engineered for love. We're made for it, as if our very DNA contains the message, you must love and be loved in order to survive. But this presents Dr. Ornish, and in fact, the mainstream of modern science, with a very serious problem. He explains, the scientific evidence leaves little doubt that love and intimacy are powerful determinants of our health and survival. Why they have such an impact remains somewhat a mystery. So to solve the mystery, Dr. Ornish posed a question to a wide range of scientists. And the question was simply this. Why are we human beings so vitally dependent on love? Their bottom line answer was something like this. Well, it's a strange thing, isn't it? We don't know why. Dr. Ornish then concludes, mystery remains. No one can fully explain why love and intimacy matter so much. Scientists are baffled by the very existence of love and the fact that we need it. But why are they baffled? Well, quite simply, because love creates a break, actually a contradiction in the train of logic in the evolutionary worldview. The problem for many scientists is that they are trying to understand the human need for love within a paradigm of reality that does not allow for the existence of love. I mean, think about it. 
Because Darwinian evolution begins with a survival of the fittest premise, it dictates that self-preservation must be the highest law and the main factor in our survival. But then you have love, which by contrast is essentially self-giving rather than self-preserving. And therefore, it makes no sense in the evolutionary context. If materialistic evolution is the truth of human origins, then human beings are merely biological animals, and therefore there is no such thing as love. And yet, here we are, creatures who thrive on love and are utterly dependent on it. A tenacious desire to love and be loved pervades every human heart. We try to explain it with no reference point beyond ourselves. We seek its satisfaction in countless material pursuits, but it remains larger than anything this world can offer, more persistent than our most determined resistance, and insistently fixed on something more than ourselves. We can't help but ask ourselves the obvious question at some point, what is that something more that we so desperately long for as human beings? Well, in two simple declarations, the Bible offers this answer, God is love and God made mankind in his own image. Mystery solved.